There was a time, even two decades ago, when all was thought to be in balance, and a shadowy rule of three was whispered among the people of Ionia. The mysterious triumvirate of the Kin Kao Order, the Fist of Shadow, the Eye of Twilight, and the Heart of the Tempest, ensured that no one extreme dominated the other, and thus Valoran experienced a time of peace. To those outside the Order, these three members, rarely seen but always watching, are immortal, abstract concepts of balance made solid. But this is not true, for the Kin Kao that now protects Ionia, and by extension Valoran, are mortal beings of flesh and blood, that despite only newly taking up the mantle of the Rule of Three, are now threatened by a dark, shadowed evil. It is not known when exactly this new order took over, but it can be safely said that they have had a greater presence in Valoran than all of their predecessors combined, which will hopefully serve them well in the forthcoming battle. Akali, the Fist of Shadow, fleet of foot and swift of hand, is charged with the duty of pruning the tree. That is, it is her task to mete out justice and eliminate those who threaten the balance her order so fastidiously created. Her title has been passed down the matrilineal line for generations, and though she has perhaps the most direct claim to a seat of the Triumvirate, she was the last of the current order to ascend. While we know not exactly why this is, we can make some reasonable assumptions. First and foremost, her mother was the current Fist of Shadow, meaning that there was no urgency to fill the role, as it already had a capable individual occupying it. Akali, perhaps a suited to her role, is said to have a capacity for violence and cruelty, as well as a heart of darkness. This second part is very important, as we will see later, but we also must bear in mind that the Kinkau Order prizes balance above all things, meaning that they believed Akali had to be tempered before she could truly join their ranks. Despite her unwavering agenda and deadly efficiency, she was young fully joining the Order at the age of 14. But, despite the revelations, she did join the Order, thus assuming her place as the Fist of Shadow. The second member of the Order is Shen, the Eye of Twilight. Impartial and truly embracing the precepts of balance, Shen leads the Kin Kao like his father before him. He is tasked with watching the stars. It is his sacred duty to judge those who violate the balance of the world. The interesting thing about Shen is his complete acceptance of his role. His father died suddenly and tragically, something we will touch upon later, forcing Shen into the role of the Eye perhaps earlier than was intended. But it is said that even as he watched his father die, Shen was not moved to passion, either anger or sadness. This simple fact places him at the center of the Kin Kao, the balance within the balance, the Eye of the Storm, as it were. He was also relatively young when he assumed his post, perhaps as young as 16, but 18 to 20 is more likely. This also puts a bit of a creepy vibe on the possible love interest theory between Shen and Akali, as they could be as much as six years apart. Finally, the third member of the Kin Kao is Kenan, the heart of the Tempest, the Yordle ninja that can run like lightning. He is charged with the job of coursing the sun, Essentially, he is the combination messenger slash PR manager of the Order, as he is the member that will issue statements and word of the judgments of the Triumvirate. Kenan, unique among the currently serving members, did not inherit his position, but rather gained it solely on skill. A wildly energetic and speedy youth, Kenan found no peace within the walls of Bandal City. It was only when he was spotted running up the walls, literally, of the city that the Kin Kao Order then composed of Akali's mother and Shen's father, took in Kenan as an apprentice in Ionia. He proved an excellent student and a fast learner, and was indeed ready, willing, and able to take over the empty post as the third member of the Kin Kao. Thus, just prior to Shen's father's death, he was inducted, and his two colleagues would soon follow. Three is the balance, for there can be no tied vote among three. Anger, caring, and dispassion in perfect harmony within the order of the Kin Kao. But there is a fourth force at work, one unbalanced by the checks and balances of the others. 
passion and rage swirl together into a shadowy maelstrom that coalesces into a singular being, Zed. A mysterious and deadly being for sure, there does exist plenty of information about this malevolent being nonetheless. The earliest we know of him is as an apprentice in the same order of martial arts that Shen belongs to, and that Shen's father was the master of. Shen and Zed were known to be rivals, but also the best of friends, at least at the beginning. As time went on, it became clear that Shen was the better warrior. Time and again, Shen bested Zed in every contest of skill, and Zed became more and more obsessed with besting his one-time friend. It was this obsession with being the best that led the young apprentice to a box, hidden away deep within the dojo. Inside, Zed found something. Something dark. Something forbidden. The dark depths of that forbidden box taught Zed the path of the shadow, and in that moment, something was lost within him. Emerging from the depths, he immediately challenged Shen to a duel, and utilizing his new techniques, he won easily. He looked to his master, expecting praise for his victory, but the only thing he saw in his master's face was disappointment. Zed was banished from the dojo, told never to return, as he had upset the balance of the order when he had learned the forbidden techniques. And here's where things get interesting. We don't know much about where Zed went after he left, but it is assumed that he gathered followers around him, individuals that had shadows in their hearts, and gathered even more support from within the dojo itself, those who felt the master had been too harsh in banishing Zed for only wanting to improve himself. Among those who felt sympathetic to the Shadow Ninja was a young prodigy who was rebelling against her own master's strict lessons, a ninja with a very interesting title, the Fist of Shadow, Akali. There is little evidence to suggest that Akali ever truly joined Zed, but we do know that something changed her mind, and it is reasonable to assume that it is the taking of the dojo that was this catalyst. For Zed did return to his one-time home, and in force. His army of shadow warriors surrounded the dojo, threatening death to all that were within. Shen's father, wanting to prevent bloodshed at all costs, invited Zed to speak with him alone. While this happened, the newly appointed Heart of the Tempest, Kenan, and the soon-to-retire Fist of Shadow, Akali's mother, evacuated the dojo, leaving Zed and Shen's father alone. This may be the wildest speculation in this video, as we have no knowledge of what went on between the two men, but here is my interpretation, given the one fact we know. There was a cry of pain. Once alone within the dojo, Shen's father revealed the truth to Zed. He had always been tougher on Zed because he truly cared about him, even more than his own son. Zed had always been his favorite, and that is why he did not kill the Shadow Ninja on the spot when he had discovered the Forbidden Arts. The master then begged Zed to come back to the school to repent the hidden techniques. He said that all would be forgiven, and that he would adopt Zed as a son and together they would heal the rift that had formed between them all these years. And Zed? He was going to take the deal. He did still care genuinely about his master, and was willing to give up all he had learned in order to be welcomed as a son by the man he had always looked up to. But the shadow he had released from that box was not just a martial arts style. It was a sentient being, a malevolent force, a venom, that was not about to be locked away again. It was here that it fully took control of Zed's mind, its hatred and evil rushing through him, annihilating the last of his humanity as he cried out in anguish. And then, its supremacy over its host assured, the shadow killed Shen's father, decapitating him and flashing the head as a trophy to Shen and the others gathered outside. Now Shen, who had been dispassionate and ruled only by balance up until this point, showed his true mental fortitude in this moment. He wanted to rush forward to retrieve his father's body, but he did not. He wanted to avenge his father on the man who killed him, but he did not. And in that moment, Shen became the Eye of Twilight. Zed took over the dojo, which is now a base for his shadow ninjas, 
Shen, Akali, and Genin have convened many times to reach a verdict on Zed, but every time it, the outcome is the same. Akali, hot-headed and angry, wants him killed. Kenan, ever the moral compass, thinks he can be redeemed. And Shen. Shen will not act in favor of either of these extremes, for he is balance incarnate. And in truth, any judgment is premature, for they must capture Zed first, which is no easy task. And so the stage is set for the great war between the balance of the Kinkau and the chaos of the shadows. But while the ninjas are those that are fighting, perhaps there is a greater force at work.